Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. I'm Izzy. This is an Oliver job site saw, and this is Maggie. Hi. So it's spring here in South Carolina, and that means outdoor projects. And now while we have a complete shop up here, we don't want to be running back and forth from the other side of the house out to the shop to make single cuts. Enter job site saw. Job site saw. Now, aside from the Oliver being a very handy place for Maggie to lean on, this saw has some really, really cool features. And I'm going to show you those today throughout today's build process. We're going to take this saw and take it to a whole nother level. I said it again. You did? <laughs> I said whole nother level again. We're going to make it really, really cool and very super functional. <laughs> and take it to another level. Hold on. Come back. When I'm with you, Are you done? I'm done. Turn around. Oh boy. <laughs> In the spirit of full disclosure, Oliver did send us this saw four or five months ago. Our obligation to them is over. This video is of our own volition. We decided to do it by our little only selves. We really wanted to show you how you can take job site saws like this and make them way more safe and way more functional. And as long as we're doing that, I am going to show you a few things about the saw because I do think it's really, really cool. Maggie and I manufacture and sell these. These are infeed tables that work with larger hybrid saws and some cabinet saws. Now we're gonna use one of these, we're gonna modify it to work with this particular saw. One of the things that's really important is that we're able to remove it and add it back on really quickly so it's not slowing us down in our workflow. And we're gonna use this saw to modify this to make it work with this. The next issue is that when you extend the fence out, there's no bed here to keep the material true to the fence. So like Maggie said, when this is extended, material can fall past here. Now, typically on this one and others, there's a little flip over fence that we've taken off of here. And you can use that to catch some flexible materials, but it sits high or proud of the tabletop and we want something that's more on the level. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put an auxiliary fence here which comes down nice and tight to the fence so thin material can't run past it. And then when they extend it out, we're gonna have a second piece that sits up against that fence. So if we're cutting material like this, it has full support when it's out on this side of the fence. That's a lot of words. Did you guys get that? So we have our infeed that pops right off. That'll go down here nicely. And then we have our secondary support system. So if we're doing that wide material, that holds it. Just got a couple of socket head bolts that go through that help secure it in so it doesn't pop off when we're using it. And then that goes right down here. So we can add those things really quickly as we need them. Now the last thing we really need to address is the outfeed. 
Now, in most cases, this little outfeed system they have right here, it will suffice. But if you're cutting shorter pieces, like 12 inches and under, or you're cutting pieces that are around 30 to 40 inches long, um, you're gonna have some issues with this type of outfeed. And I personally prefer a solid outfeed that goes out about 12 to 18 inches. So what we're gonna do with this is we're gonna use the system that they have built in here. It's got these two rods that go back into the back of the table saw, and we're gonna build a solid outfeed on that so we can remove that from the system and also tuck it away so we don't lose any of the compactness of the saw when it's folded up. And just like that, Maggie and I have made this saw more functional for our needs. And that's really what it's all about. Now there's probably an elephant in the room that we need to address. And that's the fact that we drilled holes in our brand spanking new job site saw. Now I know some of you out there might not be comfortable with that and that's fine. But for us, we will modify anything to make it match our needs and just make it more functional. So if you don't feel comfortable drilling holes in your saw, don't do it. Uh, if you wanna make your equipment more functional and work better for your needs, by all means drill holes in it, do whatever you need to do to modify it to make it more functional for your purposes. What do you think, Maggie? It works well. I love the fact that we have this crosscut feature on here. We've got all that in feed and all that out feed. That makes it, in my mind, safer for us to use and way more next level. Next level. Now, as promised, this saw has some interesting features that other saws like this don't. And the most unique one is the fact that you can actually change the speed of the rotation of the blade using a dial on the saw. Some of you may be asking, why does that matter? Well, first of all, they've included a really interesting feature on this saw that's actually a sanding feature. You can turn this table saw into a disc sander. Now, when you're disc sanding, you don't want to run at 3,400 RPMs, which is about the average of what a table saw runs as far as blade speed goes. What you do want is about 1,295 RPM. And when you reduce that down, that gets much closer to the, act to the speed that you want to do sanding and disc sanding operations.
if you're a pro and you're using this on a job site, it's mo you're most likely not going to use the sanding feature. But if you're a DIYer or in a small shop, you don't have to spend the extra two or three hundred bucks on a disc sander and you save yourself some space. That becomes really, really handy. If you are a pro and a serious DIYer or are using this for outdoor projects where you're using things like composite materials, HDPE, some plastics, or cutting polycarbonate or acrylic, this could come in very handy because you can reduce the speed of the blade and you can cut a little bit more safely because you're not getting that high speed burn or melting that happens if you pause during a cut. So I turned the RPMs quite a ways down and you can, I don't know if you can see how well you can see that, but even though I paused a couple of times throughout the cut, there's no burning, there's no pitting, it's just a nice smooth cut on the acrylic. This is expanded PVC composite, something we use on construction sites a lot, especially for trim and house trim. Super, super nice cut right there. Okay guys, that's it. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. Just a couple quick things, you know, having the extra support on the fence when you're doing wider cuts was really, really handy. Um, both Maggie and I are real happy about that, especially when we're gonna be running some sheet goods and siding materials through this. The infeed, if you're gonna be doing cross cutting, which we'll be doing a lot of on the table saw, if we don't have to get the chop box out, we're always happy about that. And then of course the outfeed, having that outfeed so you can let go of material, uh, and move or just that little extra bit of safety, especially with the cross cut was definitely worth doing. I think it is anyway. What do you think? Mm -hmm. You feel better about using the saw now? Yeah. Okay. Then that's all that matters. <laughs> Appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Hit that little bell notification so you get notified when we put new videos up. And um, we'll see you in the next video.